What is going on ladies and gentlemen and I'm having the time of my life on this Arcanist class. It is so fun to play. It is so diverse in the amount of builds that you run on it and I put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to bring you guys the best Arcanist build I possibly can for PvP. It is going to be a little bit of a longer video because it is a new class and I need to explain all the breakdowns like how all the mechanics work, your, your combos. There's a lot to talk about in this video so go get some popcorn, go get some snackies, go get a little drinky poo and let's hop into the video. Welcome back guys and hopefully you enjoyed watching the clips nearly as much as I enjoyed making them. All the duels were taken with fun, there's no bad blood, there's a new class, everyone's trying to learn it and truth be told those guys probably beat me just as much as I beat them. This video is going to be longer like I stated previously, I feel that there's a lot to talk about other than just the build, there's a lot about the class that we need to talk about and information you guys need to know because you know, it's a new class, you guys need to know this stuff. First off, we're going to go over the character sheet. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, it really doesn't matter what race you pick because the Arcanist has a very unique way of how the builds play out because half of your abilities, probably like two thirds of your abilities actually scale off whatever stat pool is higher. For example, if your magicka pool is higher, all uh, most of your spells start costing magicka. And then if your stamina pool is higher, then most of your spells start to cost stamina. At least some of them. Some of the buffs and debuffs are, are like a static resource pool, but a lot of the spells are dynamic, and which is is a really cool concept for the class. So in my personal opinion, if you already know what stat pool you're going to go with, just play toward that stat pool. If you know for a fact that you're going to put all your points into Magicka, go with the Breton. If you know for a fact you're going to put all your points into Stamina, I would probably go with the Imperial. But if you're like me and you have absolutely no clue what's going on and what you're going to prefer and always flip-flopping back and forth, I went with the Dark Elf because it literally does everything. Keep in mind as I'm going through this build guys, this is from a 1v1 or a small group standpoint type of build. I do have a solo serial build coming out here in the next few days. And I also have a battleground slash bombing build, which I will also have for you guys here on the channel. So if you haven't already, please like and sub so you're notified when that content goes live. 
So all the clips you saw was using this exact build. Now I am kind of over sustaining on the build. I do have 2K stamina recovery and 1600 magic recovery. There is some min maxing that still needs to be done, uh, sacrificing some of your uh, resource management for damage. But quite frankly, you have an absurd amount of damage on this class anyway. Intrinsically, we already have 13K spell penetration, and that's not including the minor breach that we're going to apply, the major breach. Effectively, you're going to get all the way up to like 28K spell pen. And in most cases, you're going to be over penetrating people in serial and 1v1s. And hey, who can argue with some over penetration you know what i mean better to over penetrate than under penetrate weapon and spell damage is as follows it does get pretty high i'm not gonna lie to you guys or healing is astronomical on this build now so take a look at the spell critical now even though we do have a passive that gives you critical extra critical damage very similar to to the khajiit i can't really recommend the khajiit because quite frankly guys you don't have any hard hitting skills on the kit to benefit from the crit from you you don't really have anything you kind of rely on a lot of proc sets to do the damage for you which is unfortunate um, because this class is very flashy and has a lot of utility but to be honest there's nothing you're going to crit with that is going to be anything comparable to like an in cap or a spectral bow so i'm not opting for crit critical damage like, literally at all which kind of leads me into the next point i haven't ran this mythic i think i'm going to run this mythic in open world though is actually malakan's ban and a brutality i think it is going to make a huge resurgence since mars bomb has been nerfed i think a lot of people are going to resort to rallying cry to minimize the crit damage well this is well malakanth is a anti-meta set now anti-meta mythic you're going to increase your base damage you're not even worried about crit at all so most people wearing rallying cry is a completely wasted set for them so when we go into the serial build the 1bx build here in the next few days that's probably going to be on the build i still yet to test it when you compare it to something like marking ring and majesty or sea serpent's coil i do believe this class is really going to struggle with mobility in open world even though you do have that teleport that teleport is kind of wonky and you're going to use it like the one time it's really weird so i do think malakanth is a very solid mythic item and choice on this class we are a vampire stage three and we are also running our food of choice is smoked bear haunch if you don't have the goal for this you can just run jewels and misrule it's like slightly less health and slightly less recoveries it's really not a big deal you don't notice at all and then for amundus we're running the lover so the very first set that we're using is masters perfected dual wield now this is we're running dual maces on this nern home for the main hand we're running sharpen for the offhand just for the extra spell penetration we're actually running double dot poisons on this because the monster set we're running is marcelix and marcelix actually get buffed for all the negative effects you have on your opponent and we'll cover that here in just a minute so the tldr for this set is that it does buff your blood craze and also your running slashes substantially this is probably the hardest hitting dot in the entire game it's not necessarily the best spammable anymore we'll go over that in the skills here in just a moment in the alternate build that i have prepared for you guys but it is a very solid option for literally any class all right, back bar running bait strands ice staff surprise surprise this is going to help bolster our weakness to the elements which is our source of major breach on the build we have a defending trade on this and we also have a berserker damage glyph now alternatively you could change the berserker damage glyph to a weakening enchantment um either one is really good for the build so essentially what it does uh, every 10 seconds once you cast elemental susceptibility which are source or major breach you will have a beam attached to your opponent for 10 seconds and it does kind of ramp up damage over time but the reason we're using this again is to have the most negative effects you can possibly have on your opponent to buff marcelix and speaking of marcelix is next set we're going to cover now this is an incredible set that i haven't really used a lot until as of late um combat metrics this is always like top three dps on the class it is a super strong set now when it comes to the traits you'll probably want well fitted on all of your uh, excuse me you'll probably want impenetrable on all of your lights and medium pieces even though impenetrable by itself is a very lackluster trait to have you do need that crit mitigation against night blades for example even with like 1500 crit resist which isn't a lot i'm still getting hit by 15 16k bows on the regular so having more impenetrable will really help out the build now i do have triglyphs on all the armor that's how you get the most bang for your buck when it comes to your build so Mars 6, for you guys who don't know what it does, it gives you a line of stamina, and then when you deal damage with a heavy attack melee, you spew this cone out in front of you, and it's going to deal hellacious disease damage to your opponent and everyone in the AoE. Now, that damage is a bolster by each negative effect you have on your opponent. At any given time on this build, we have 12 to 15 negative effects, so this does ramp up really hard, really fast, and usually when you take a look at your combat metrics, this is your third highest DPS item overall. When it comes to the armor weights, I've played around with a lot because one of the sets we are using is actually craftable. 
I do think ideally between testing all the sets, the clips that you saw was in four medium, but I think in dueling in particular, you will want four light, two medium, one heavy. I think that would be the optimum way to play this. And even though we are using all of our abilities based off stamina, I think having the extra penetration and cost reduction on your magic abilities is really, really strong. But again, at the time of making this, I'm running four medium, two light, one heavy. So if you want to copy boss of that, go for it. So essentially, whenever you deal non-bleed damage to your opponent, you're generating stacks of dragon's appetite. And upon reaching 10 stacks of dragon's appetite, you do get a huge burst steal for 10k on tooltip. And this can actually crit going all up to 15k and it actually comes in clutch a lot of the time now if you want to go full in on the damage you could definitely run dragon on this but you are a little squishy another alternative five piece set you can run on this if you really want to go balls to the walls and go straight for damage is deadly strike or set of the deadly which i have a set of it right here if you guys just wanted to kind of take a look at the tooltip i mean this set is absolutely amazing and this um it's a good idea to just have the deadly set in general because this is a set we are going to be using you know spoiler alert in the open world build in serial which i'm gonna post here in a few days next set we're running is one piece training just for the health bonus and then the other set we're running is druid's bracers also for the health bonus hopping over into the jewelry this is the last set on the build which is sea serpent's coil we are running infused on this i think ideally you want three bloodthirsty because the arcanist does have an issue with securing kills you're really good at doing damage at you know, the higher tiers but you really lack and execute that's why running a two-hander on this build would not be a bad idea at all or even running whirling blades just for the execute because once you get people low and they start roll dodging all over the place it is very very hard to secure kills so i would actually recommend running three bloodthirsty on this all right guys hopping over into the skills i'm gonna take a little bit of time and explain some of the skills in the synergy with the passives because i feel like it needs to be said now uh, first off, I'm just going to talk about one of the passives. Uh, the reason I have my bar set up the way I do on the front bar is splintered secrets. Now, so essentially every single time you have a ability slotted from the skill line, it's going to give you um, uh, physical and spell penetration. You notice we already have a 4,000 bonus just for having these abilities sitting on the bar. This is like 8% extra damage. So if you can squeeze out some of these skills on your front bar, definitely go for it. It's worth it. Anyway, the first skill we're going to go over is our Pragmatic Fate Carver. Now, the other morph of this is pretty good. It does apply a snare, but what this ability does, so essentially this is your Kamehameha. This is going to be your finisher. This is the whole purpose of building up Crux on this build is just so you can spin them for this ability or in back bar, there's another ability we're going to talk about, but we'll get to that. So Prismatic Fate Carver. So this damage will be bolstered by up to 100% um, per Crux spin. You can spin up to three Cruxes. Now, this damage is applied every 0.3 seconds. So notice when I cast it, it will apply three times per second, ideally. Now, I have made a couple of videos on this, and I will say this is the most inconsistent ability that I have ever had the misfortune slash fortune of using on any class ever. This is a very love skill a very hate skill because the hit registry on this is absolutely abysmal i hate it but but when it does land when it does chunk when it does hit immobilize enemies because they can't be strafing from side to side this is the hardest hitting ability in the entire game by far it actually hits harder than soul assault that is assuming you can land all the ticks from this. This is a skill shot. This is not a targetable ability. You, you cannot just Jesus beam someone. This is, you gotta aim it. And it does have a vertical component to it as well. And like aiming it at people's feet like this is not necessarily the, the best way to do it. But anyway, the whole purpose of this build is to generate three crux. Uh, you do have an immobilize, which is very, very annoying to play against. I'll explain that in a minute. And then you also have one of the wonkiest CCs in the entire game, which we, we are going to talk about. I don't know what's going on with this uh, this morph of uh, your, your, your CC, but it is so annoying to play against in your PvP. So it what this does, it is it used to be on the PTS, it used to be a long range fossilized, an OP fossilized, but they since made it to where you can block this stun. You cannot roll dodge it. You can block this stun. And I highly suggest you block this stun because if you do not, it is so wonky to break out of. You're probably stunned for like a literally a, ha a second and a half when you get hit by this. It is so wonky. I don't know if the exhaust is gonna fix this, but that's the reason we're running it because it is the op morph version of it so essentially um you're just going to put this debuff on them you're going to inflict them with a minor vulnerability the other morph does put a minor brittle on them but since we don't care about crit damage anyway it, it really doesn't matter but guys trust me this 
this stun is super annoying and once you start playing the class and once you start getting hit by this and you're going to notice really quickly that it is really really nutty and another reason we're doing this um as you guys may be seen in some of the clips at the beginning it does have a pool charm effect so for example if i cast your ultimate what you want to do while this ultimate is going your opponent is kiting it you want to kind of kite behind the ultimate and charm them so when you charm them not only is it going to stun them but it's going to make them walk toward you back into the ultimate and we will be discussing this ultimate in just a second if you thought northern storm was bad this is literally twice as worse like this thing fucking chunks Anyway, moving on to the next skill, we're using a recuperative uh, testes or tree ties or whatever. We're calling them recuperative testes for the sakes of this video. This is your source of uh, major sorcery and major brutality. You actually don't even have to cast this to get major brutality, major sorcery. You just got to have it on your bar somewhere. It doesn't even have to be on your first, uh, your front bar. The reason we have it on the front bar is because of the passes to get your uh, offensive penetration. So this is really good. It's pretty decent. Now, if you're using escalating rune blades as your spammable um, instead of running slashes, which we will cover in a moment. I do think you want the other morph version of this because what this does is this does increase. This allows you to restore magic and stamina every five seconds when you're using your, your class abilities. The other morph of this allows you to restore that. Uh, no, excuse me. You don't restore that. Instead of dealing damage and restoring resources every five seconds, you're instead doing damage every three seconds. So if you're spammable, is a class ability i highly suggest you go with the other more version of this but if your spammable is not a class ability then go with recuper recuperative testes just so you can get the resource regeneration and it also generates a crux if you have none and again you don't have to cast this to get the major brutality and major sorcery you just have to have it on your bar it is pretty expensive so i would not over apply it unless you absolutely have to Next ability on the bar is Rending Slashes. Now this is our spammable. It does uh, get buffed up by our Master's Perfected Weapon. See on Tooltip, this thing hits so freaking hard, guys. Just take a look. I don't know why the Tooltip updates after you've already you know, uh, attacked or whatever. But yeah, it's a 30k bleed damage dot over 20 seconds. You have to have this up on your opponent 100% of the time because if you do not have this on your opponent, Dragon's Appetite, the five piece that we're using for a really strong kill, does not work. So when it comes to buff and debuff priority you have to have rending slashes on your target at all times um you also do have a passive that increases the damage of your status effects if i can find it here by 15 percent, which is psychic lesion so every single time you weave your rending slashes you're applying the hemorrhaging status effect which does damage which also lowers their health their effective health by 10 percent, which is really strong and it also has a movement speed slow component to it which is very helpful because that helps us land our pris prismatic fart carver or fake carver or whatever next on the bar is kind of a flex spot but i have found that the root to this is super annoying and really good to play around because when you are playing against opponents it is very you stay you stamp check your opponents like constantly with this it's like playing dk with talons and then fossilize right afterward the exact same play style goes into this so what people have started doing, uh, they, they start block casting everything. So you have to rely on your CC to, you know, CC them and they're blocking. It's completely not going to work. And so three of your combos off, it's going to put you in a really bad situation. What Syphilis Flail does, it allows you to root them. And you know, on the DK, if you ever play the DK, someone gets rooted. Their very first things instincts into roll dodge. Well, as soon as you root them, you're going to cast your stone afterwards and you're going to catch them in that roll dodge nine out of 10 times unless your opponent really knows what they're doing. And another reason I really like Syphilis Fell is that it roots them. So when you pop your ultimate, it is really interesting. It's a big mind game. Like there's a lot of like 200 IQ chess that goes into this ultimate. You don't just use it and then, you know, use your beam and Kamehameha them. That's, that's not how you use this ultimate. Um, ideally, it's best to be used defensively when your opponent is committing on you. Use it defensively to start out the combo. And then when, when they try to run away from you, instead of stunning them right off, obviously you will have all your cruxes for your for, for your, your, your fart carver, right? But what you want to kind of do is like root them first. So you're going to root them. The ultimate's going to catch up with them. And then you're going to, you know, as your ult is going, as they're roll dodging away, you're going to cast your stun. It's also going to pull them back into the ultimate. Maybe run up and running slash them just to where they are slowed, you know, even more. And if they're running something like Sea Serpent Squirrel, there's no way they're getting out of this, right? That, 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 that slow is just too much to play around. So it is kind of a mind game. It, it, it gives you a lot of outplay potential because this ult is deceivingly hard hitting, which we'll cover here in just a second. So it will take you some practice, some time to learn how to finesse your ult and how to play around it. There's a lot of different scenarios that i can think of and maybe i'll make a whole video 
on how to really outplay your opponent with this ultimate. It is so great. But anyway, Syphilis Flail. Um, this is kind of like a pseudo execute. It's really not that good of an execute. But what it does do is that it does the root. Um, you can use it as an execute to hit people through roll dodge. I um, mean, unfortunately, it does have a cast time. But the good thing about this having a cast time is if you choose to run Deadly Strike on this build because it has a cast time, it actually does get buffed by this. So this is a very hard hitting ability if you're going to go balls to the walls and run Deadly instead of Dragon's Appetite. Kind of finish out the rest of the ability it actually does give you a really small heal which can also crit and then of course when your opponent is below 50 percent it can deal up to 100 percent extra execute damage and it also applies a debuff to your opponent more debuffs the better because of marslix you know for each negative effect that increases your damage done against them by five percent so it's a really good uh, it's pretty cheap as well so it does a lot so it is a pseudo execute um it is a mini heal it does damage, hits through roll dodge, right? It immobilizes them and it puts a debuff on your opponent. And just for 2700 stamina, it is really, really good to have some root on this build. Last ability on the bar is our ultimate. You will want to go with the Tide King's Gaze because this is the one that actually follows your opponent instead of remaining static. This thing chunks. This is the scariest ultimate in the game. Not, not only is it damage wise the scariest ultimate in the game but i mean like, let's let's be real let's let's just look at this for a second this thing is fucking cool bro like what that thing is fucking cool anyway good job zoss on this one but uh the aoe is uh, pretty massive that, that, that five meter radius is actually pretty long and that, so essentially what it does is every single time they're marinating in this it does 4500 damage per half second this is 9,000 damage per second. This is double what Northern Storm is on the Warden. Just to give you some context, this thing is the best skill in the entire kits. Even when your fights go on for like five or 10 minutes, sometimes God forbid that doesn't happen because you have so much damage on this build. Anyway, the, this, the Tide King's Gaze is like one, top one, top two DPS in your entire build. Even if they're just marinating in it for three or four seconds every single time you cast this, this thing does hellacious damage. And the good thing about it is it's AOE. Not a lot of people are running AOE mitigation. now. Fortunately, on the build, you actually do have a passive which gives you a minor evasion, which is going to decrease the damage that you take from AoE abilities. Now, alternatively, what you could kind of run on the uh, the front bar, which I've kind of played around with, you can run battle drought potions or whatever to give you your, your line of crit and also your major sorcery and major brutality. What you can do if you really want to be like a 200 IQ, hey, I'm going to be every single Arcanist in the game, you can run Deadly Cloak. Now, Deadly Cloak does do a fair bit amount of damage as well, but what it does give you, it gives you major evasion. So you're going to have minor evasion and major invasion on this build. So all of the AoE damage that you're going to receive is reduced by 30%. So if you want to be a Sweat Lord or maybe toss this on, this is actually, even though it doesn't say it is a very hard hitting dot, this is actually a decent a hitting dot as well. That major evasion is nothing to be slept on for sure. Anyway, moving on to the back bar, rant over. So we're running Elemental Susceptibility. This is going to proc our Vatran staff. This is our source of major breach. And this also does apply all of the major status effects to your opponent, which is further going to buff Marcelix. Now... Let's talk about something that needs nerf. Um, I, I, I don't throw out that word too often. Nerf. I hate using that word because I, every time I talk about something that's broken or overpowered, um, it tends to get adjusted. Now, Impervious Rune Ward. Guys, this is why I said at the beginning of the video, this is the class the Sorcerer wishes it could be. This ward is hellacious. Take a look at it. So the first second you cast this ward, you get a 22k damage shield. Now, you have to use this efficiently, and it does cost a lot. People use this wrong. You do not pre-buff with this. This is only your oh shit button. You cannot be spamming this on this build. You'll run out magicka. Okay, this is when you know the burst is coming. Like for example, um, a Templar is putting power of the light on you. You know the burst is coming. You know the second it's going to come right before the CC. You know a meteor is about to hit you. You're going to use this. The first second of that ward is a 22k ward. And the remaining duration of that, the, the remaining five seconds, you get a 13k ward. This is buffed by Bastion and, you know, other passives like that. This is amazing by itself, but it gets better. Again, you have to time this correctly. If you do not time this correctly, a lot of the efficiencies will be wasted and you're, you're just running on magic. 
The other part of it, okay, yeah, it does a little bit of damage, cool. You know, the, the second paragraph of this. The last one, though, this is what I think needs nerfed. Yes, this is kind of like a skill ward, like a skill shot ward by itself, but the last piece of the puzzle consumes Crux to heal yourself for 3,000 health, scaling off your max health and per Crux spent. Guys, if you are using Escalating Rune Blades to generate a lot of Crux, or if you just have a lot of Crux generation on the build, this thing heals you for a massive amount and it can crit. So effectively, what you're looking at this ward, when you have a three, a three stacked Crux combo, so you're effectively getting like a 35k damage shield if you're using it correctly. It's going to do a little bit of damage and it's going to heal you for 10k, which can crit up to like 14 and 15k. How nutty is that? <laughs> if you really think about it, man. If you're ever in those oh shit situations, you know, you're taking a lot of damage in open world or duels. This, this ability is absolutely absurd. Now, I wish the, the scaling of this word would apply to like the, the sorcerers like Max Magic Awards or whatever. But this is probably the best skill in the entire kit. This gets you out of so many situations. And if you have the magic of sustain for this, you just don't die. There's no way. Next ability is Resolving Vigor. I mean, it is nice to have a healing over time effect instead of a bunch of insta-cast heals. I might do like having Vigor here because it does give you minor resolve and having this healing over time transitioning to your front bar really helps. Crux Weave Armor is our source of major resolve. And then also, uh, while the armor persists, uh, anyone who attacks you is getting inflicted with minor breach, which is very, very strong. And also every once every five seconds, you do generate Crux. So yeah, a definite must have on the build. Plus it's really cheap and it'll last a while. Last ability on the bar is Revolving Rumen. Now, uh, this will heal you for um, uh, what is effectively 12k worth of healing uh, when you cast, and then you also do get a healing over time component to it. And it also reduces the cost per crux that you have, and it also generates crux which, when you cast it, which is really, really strong. So when you're backpedaling on your back bar, it's also very important to generate crux just so your impervious room work can heal you. And then, then you also do have crux that carries over into your front bar just so you can get your times three pragmatic fate card recon off. Now alternatively I do see a lot of people running you go into Soldier of Apocrypha and running Runic Defense. Now Runic Defense is going to give you minor resolve as well which you know kind of overrides um, uh, some of the, the, the good portion of Vigor. Um, it's going to give you minor protection again if you have like Sigic or Skill on you're already going to get minor protection anyway. And then the first time you drop below 50% health, it does give you a burst heal, but it consumes the uh, the the minor protection effect. And then the more for this, you can be untargetable, or no, excuse me, unstunnable for like six seconds. And this can only occur like every 30 seconds. I mean, th this is okay, um, but it, it really doesn't sell it for me. Maybe it will perform better in open world, but I definitely know having an on-demand heal like Evolving Groom in, and it also generates Crux, which is like the whole point of the build. Um, is really really strong and really powerful so depending on you know your play style and what you want to do uh, this last spot is entirely up to you and what you want to run i just prefer revolving room man vigor and then impervious room ward is all of the healing that you're going to need on the build ever and our ultimate on our back bar now you can run a gibbering shield this will give you 60 percent damage mitigation and then you're going to take the morph of this that allows you to disperse that damage to, in an aoe around you once this ward ends and again this is going to be really good for open world but just for the sakes of the video and the 1v1 build we're running undo well, actually you want the other morph for this i only have this ward. i only have minor protection on the back bar and this build still slaps there's still a lot of leveling your boy gotta do and before we go over into the combo section i do run tripods on this build now if you want to run the alliance battle drop potions you definitely can do that and then this will actually free up a slot on your front bar you can actually drop recu recuperative testes or uh rune blade spammable or you know, just literally kind of whatever you want this is going to be more of a flex spot for you to kind of experiment and play around with now let's kind of hop over into the the combo section so you're going to cast ellie drain go to your front bar crux we will generate one crux during this do not forget okay if that doesn't generate crux then your recuperative testes definitely will all right you're going to cast syphilis flow which is going to apply all the debuffs and stuff that you need you know your root your immobilization then you're going to medium attack weave after you do your syphilis flail and technically you can kind of throw in little combo if, if your opponent isn't going to roll dodge right after this syphilis flail on marslix medium attack if you see they're not roll dodging for like a half a second go ahead and start telling your kamehameha and then once they start roll dodging out of that you can cast your adoration again it will charm them cc them pull them toward you and then what you can do again you can root them a second time yes you can root them a second time after the cc unless they roll dodge immediately after the cc and then their immunity so yeah you can get two roots in this building in the same rotation which is really really strong so again 
LED drain before you go to your front bar for the beam. You'll want to light attack, syphilis flail, medium attack. From right here, it really depends on how your opponent is playing. Maybe you can stun them. Maybe you can use an ultimate. Maybe you can just Kamehameha haul them if they're going to stand still. This really depends on how your opponent is playing. And just kind of, it, you can experiment a lot with it. I mean, I'm saying there's a lot to go on. And also, one thing I, I forgot to point out, since this does do magic damage, this will apply minor magic seal to your opponent as well, which is going to obviously, you know, give you minor magic seal. And it's also going to be another status effect to Prog Mars Leg. So there's actually a lot that goes into this. Hopping over into the champion points, I will go through these. So we are running Cleansing Revival. Guys, uh, they were supposed to fix this. They did not. This is a free Mars Purge now. If you're not running this in open world, if you're not running this in duels, you are, or 1v1s, whatever, you are gimping yourself so hard. This is a free reset. This is a free purge. And the reason it's bugged is that it procs at any percentage of health. I wish they fixed this because it does make duels a lot more fun. Everyone not running the CP, but sometimes you just got to fight fire with fire. It is what it is. Next is Biting Auras. We do have a lot of AoE damage. This is debatable whether or not you want Biting Auras, but the, I prefer Biting Auras, you know, with your ultimate hitting as hard as it does, with Syphilis Flow hitting as hard as it does, and with Fart Carver hitting as hard as it does. Biting Auras is really hard to pass up. I'm actually running Thaumaturge as well because most damage on this build is considered damage over time. Your ultimate, your Fate Carver, all of your dots that you have, everything's getting bolstered by 6%, so I actually do prefer Thaumaturge. And then for a one blue defensive CP, well, I guess Cleansing Revival, is a defensive CP as well. I'm running Ironclad. You can either run Ironclad or Duel's Rebuff. Entirely up to you. Hopping over into the red tree, we're running Bastion. This is going to buff our Rune Ward, and this is also going to allow us to deal 15% increased damage to Sorcerers who are running Wards. Sorceresses are your Kryptonite. That class completely kites you. It outplays you. Of any classes you are going to go against, Sorgs are going to be what melts you. It is such a hard, frustrating class to play against because you got to get close for your combos. If you can't get close, you're just screwed. So this allows you to have 15% increased damage against them, assuming they're running a ward. Next is Survival Instincts. This is quintessential. This is like one of the best red CPs you can have. It's going to reduce the cost of all of your combat abilities, which is block, roll dodge, bash you know whatever by 25 percent that's actually huge especially break free pain refuge this is going to reduce your damage taken per negative effect up to 20 percent that you have on you and then last but not least is sustained by suffering green tree as always have liquid efficiency war mount gift of rider and steve's blessing Thank you all so much for making it to the end. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate a like and sub. That is the best way to support the channel. But if you want to support the channel in other ways, I also do have YouTube memberships on Patreon. If you guys want to check that out, and a little bit of PvP coaching, I do that on the side as well. So if you want to get good at PvP fast, especially the Arcanus, I got you. Now, I still do owe you guys a hot tub stream from my DK dueling build hitting 500 likes. So I will notify you guys of a community post when that's going to happen. Okay. And then a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who continue to support me and give me all the goals in the game and grind my skill points and grind levels and help me grind this class. You guys are absolutely phenomenal. This build could not have happened so fast without your guys' help. I really appreciate it. Again, thanks for watching until the end. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in Cyrodiil. Peace.